And where do you go if uh, the questions on web work are not enough? The book. So 10.7 has tons of questions in there. I don't know, usually there's at least 30, sometimes 60 or 70. You should know how much you need to do. I talked about the learning curve and how you feel at different parts of the learning curve. So you might finish all the web work questions and still feel like you don't have a good understanding. So that's when you go to your book and do some more questions. A lot of times I am creative and I'll make my own questions, but other times I go right to the book. And certainly for identities, there's a finite amount of creativity that you can do. And I have to make sure they actually work, unlike your actual midterm. I think I had a problem on it. Because uh, I typed in, I don't know, cotangent should have been tangent, something like that. Uh, but I will occasionally go pick questions right out of the book. Sometimes I pick qu questions right out of web work. So both, and of course, sometimes I pick questions I did in class or something similar to what I did in class. So this one, it'll look, there's not really any algebra to do, so it looks like it's almost solved, except there is one tricky part to this. So there's really no algebra to do, at least not at first. So what angle has a sine value of 1 half? So we're going to play the same game we did before. Do I want an x or a y value of 1 half? I want a y value of 1 half because sine is a, a y measurement. So here's 1 half. And what are the angles that get me these points on the unit circle? Yep, that's right. So we got pi over 6, and so that's that angle, and then the other one going that way. 5 pi over 6. All right. So we're not breaking any new ground by writing sine pi over 6 equals 1 half and sine 5 pi over 6 equals 1 half. So that's stuff we did before. So what we're going to do, I just underlined 2 theta. So this means 2 theta is either pi over 6 or 5 pi over 6. Now, can I add a full rotation to uh, pi over 6 and have the same sign value? Yep, so I can add full rotations to either of these two. So I got plus 2 pi k plus 2 pi k, and at the end I'll write k as an integer. I only need to really write that one time. All right, so this is almost solved. This is solved for 2 theta. Now the easy part, how do I solve for just theta? Divide by 2. That's all you have to do. So we got two theta equations here. I'm just going to divide by 2 and get thetas. So we have pi over 12. Make sure you divide everything by 2. So when I say divide by 2, I usually don't write this out. Uh, somewhere in middle school or high school or wherever you took your algebra class, they probably did some notation like this, divide by 2, divide by 2. So I skipped that step, but make sure you divide both pieces by 2. Don't just divide the first part by 2. And then you just have to tell me k is an integer, and I'm lazy, so I like to write integer notation like that. So here is our two answers. Well, there's actually infinite answers, but there's two types, and you can add as many, in this case, pi's as you want. So why is this pi? You could think about, well, if you put a pi in for theta, you're going to end up doubling it. So it turns into a 2 pi. So that should make sense up there. Or you could think the graph, what happens to the graph? It looks like it's uh, stretched by 2 horizontally, but it's actually compressed by half. So your period was 2 pi, and it gets uh, compressed half as big, half as wide, I should say. So that's why this period of this sine function is actually pi. If you graph it out, you would get that the period's pi. 
Now the web work questions, most of them, so this is a web work note, you'll have to read them as you're doing them. Different ones have different um, restrictions. Many web work questions. They have some restriction. They're gonna have different restrictions. Uh, let's say that it was theta is between zero and two pi. That's a pretty standard, ooh, that's a bad pi, two pi. All right, so if, if I also put a restriction and say theta needs to be between zero and two pi, we certainly get pi over six and five pi over six. So if, if, we, if I add this restriction on, it means we, we don't have infinite answers anymore. Are there any other answers that fit into the 0 to 2 pi interval? So the two answers I wrote down are the k equals 0. So that was k equals 0. Those are our original two uh, angles. So what if I go negative 1, make k negative 1? In that case, both of those would be negative. What about k is positive 1? Oh, what am I doing? Not pi over 6. These are over 12. You should have stopped me. 12, 12. Yes. All right. There's two more answers. What is the next answer? So these were k equals 0 answers. How about k equals 1? So I'm just filling in right here, just making k 1. And we get 13 pi over 12. Is that less than 2 pi? Yep, if you need to think in 12, so it's 24 pi over 12. So it definitely fits in the interval. There's one more answer that fits in the interval. So find it right now. Give you a hint, k equals 1. If we put the restriction on it, all of a sudden you don't have infinite answers anymore. You just have the ones that fit inside that interval right there. Uh, the next one would be 25 pi over 12, which would be outside. That would be just a little bit too big, 25 pi over 12. All right, so just be a little careful on web work. Uh, most of the questions are going to restrict it. They won't all say 0 to pi, 2 pi. Some of them will go negative pi to positive pi or some other different versions. So just be a little aware of uh, what that is. It takes longer to answer this question than it does to answer the original one. The original one, you're like, hey, add as many periods as you want, and you're done. So this way, you have to actually figure out, well, how many periods can I add or subtract and still make it inside the interval? So I will ask the uh, unrestricted question, give me all the answers, because it's generally faster to get to that. So now we're going to crank up the algebra difficulty a little bit. So why is this question a lot more difficult? This is a quadratic equation. It's got a squared term in it. So before, they're all linear. So you basically just uh, multiplied, divided, and added, subtracted. And you're pretty much done. And you got down to your trig problem. Here, we have a quadratic. So we can use my favorite F word, factor. So things might look a little scary like this. You could always rewrite with better notation. 
better exponential notation. So this problem seems a little tricky. Let's rewrite it. We'll go to easy mode. So I'm just going to take sine theta and replace it with x. So we got two of those things squared minus three of the things plus one equals zero. All right, so solve this in easy mode now. Quadratic equation. Quadratic formula always works. Complete the square always works. Factoring works if you're lucky. You can factor over the integers. I think this one factors. So fast note about factoring over the integers. I see a 2x squared, and there's no, I can't really factor a 2 out of the rest. Those are not even numbers, so I can't just factor a 2 out right away. So if we're lucky, and it factors nicely, it's going to be 2x in the first factor, and then just regular x in the second factor. Now I see I need a plus 1 at the end, so I need either both negative or both positive. And then I see a minus 3 as my middle term, so they better both go negative. So I know right away, without thinking very much, this is what it's going to start like. And from here, well, what makes 1? 1 times 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And then if I go for the inside-outside terms, we get negative x minus 2x is minus 3x. So that works out. All right, ZPP, zero product property. Two things multiplied to make 0 means one of them is 0 and or the other one is 0. So zero product property. So we got 2x equals 1, x equals 1 half, or x equals 1. All right, so that was a trip down memory lane. Good old days. Algebra 2, something like that. Algebra 1, maybe. So now we're going to use those skills and go back to our original problem. And it's going to factor exactly the same. So no change except instead of x, everything is sines, uh, sine thetas. So we're going to have 2 sine theta, sine theta, and we get the minus 1 here. So minus 1 squared is positive 1. Minus 2 sine theta, minus sine theta is minus 3 sine theta, and then the first terms multiplied are 2 sine squared theta. So we get that right there. So we factored zero product property. So multiply to make zero means either of them are zero separately. 2 sine theta minus 1 equals zero, or sine theta minus 1 equals zero. So what we have right here are two linear trigonometry problems. So they're just like the ones we did before. So now all we have to do is add, subtract, or divide, and we'll be able to figure out sine theta. So add 1, divide by 2, sine theta equals 1 half, or sine theta equals 1. So any questions on this algebra? All right, sine theta is positive 1 half. I think we just did that right up stairs here somewhere. Hopefully, sine theta is 1 half. Uh, this is sine 2 theta is 1 half, so we're going to get basically pi over 6 by pi over 6 plus periods. So it'll be the same problem we just did. So we got 1 half, and there, and there. 
All right, sine theta equals 1. It's a y value of 1. That's at the very top of the unit circle. There's only one place on the unit circle you get positive 1. All right, so three angles we have. We said pi over 6. We just got a pi over 2. And then we also had a 5 pi over 6. So there's three angles that have a sine value of either 1 half or 1. So it's a little weird because we have multiple values right here that we have to keep track of, one half and one, but you just put them on the unit circle, measure your y one half and y is one, and then figure out where your points are. So there's gonna be three types of answers. We have, I'll go small one first, medium, large, but we also have to go add um, two pi k's, so we have to add periods here. And of course, k is an integer. If you don't like the bold z, I'll go k. I'll write out k is an integer. You can always write out integer if you're into English. That will work. So it might seem a little silly to draw a unit circle and then mark off one half and one, but if what you put inside the box is wrong, at least I can look at your unit circle and say, oh, well, they knew one half was a y value and one was a y value. But maybe you said this was like pi over three for some reason. At least I'll see that you were on the right track, so I can give you partial credit for that. How do you check once you've solved, how do you check if you're right? Almost. Yeah, so we're going to plug in, plug these in. Now, it's supposed to work for any k value, right? Not just for like 5 and 10 and 12 or something. It's supposed to work for every integer k. So I'm going to plug in. Let's just plug in the last one right here. You can check all three if you have time. I'm going to check just this last one. I recommend you plug it into the very first, the original equation, because there's a good chance, maybe uh, if I messed up this one right here that I drew an arrow to, well, maybe it solves one that I, you know, that's not equivalent to the first one. So I'm going to go all the way to the source. So I got 2 sine squared, squared theta minus 3 sine theta. plus one equals zero, so we got two sine five pi over six plus two pi k squared, I'm using the better exponential notation here, minus three sine five pi over six plus two pi k plus one, and does that equal zero? Okay, so let's figure out what in the world is sine pi over 6 plus 2 pi k. Well, first of all, does it matter if I add as many 2 pi's as I want to to the sine function? Sine doesn't care. So adding as many 2 pi k's, that's not going to change the value. So that's not going to affect it. All right, what is sine 5 pi over 6? You could look back up, but maybe there's a mistake with your unit circle. So let's not go right back to that unit circle just in case. So where's 5 pi over 6? That's the last stop before you hit pi. And we get negative square root of 3 over 2 comma positive 1 half. So the positive 1 half is the value that we're using. So we get 2 times 1 half squared minus 3 times 1 half plus 1. And 2 times a half squared, that's 2 fourths minus three halves plus one. Fractions suck, unless you have common denominator. Two fourths minus more fourths. Six fourths plus four fourths. All right.
right? That is 0 fourths, all right, which is 0. So if you have extra time, you can absolutely check your answers here. You won't necessarily have extra time depending on your algebra speed and your, how fast you can draw your unit circle and figure out x or y values and what angles get you there. But that is how to check. And it sh you should be able to check with your you know, plus 2 pi k, or if I went back, I have a regular, where do we go, plus pi k. When you plug that in, you're going to find that you're going to multiply it by 2. So it'll turn into a 2 pi k. So I'm going to solve this. All right, first of all, why is this a little extra tricky? It is quadratic, but why is it worse? Yeah, so unfortunately, it's not cos and cos squared. So how can I force this back to be either both in cosine and cos squared, or both in sine and sine squared? Yep. So we're going to deal with the squared term is how we're going to change it around. So we're going to turn sine squared. So if you forgot the uh, sine squared is 1 minus cos squared, that's fine. What you need to know, sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. And we're going to solve for sine squared. So we have sine squared theta equals 1 minus cos squared theta. So we're going to make this substitution now. So now we have a quadratic in terms of cosine. So we're going to combine like terms. So the 3 and the 2, we can combine those. The best way, just really one of the only ways to solve a quadratic, unless you're lucky, is get all the terms on one side. You're basically solving for 0. And then you'll be able to hopefully factor it out. So I want to get all the terms. In this case, I like my square term to be positive. So I'm going to take my square term and add it to both sides. So we have 2 cos squared theta plus 3 cos theta. And then we're going to subtract the 2 on both sides. So any algebra questions getting down to here? All right, I want you to finish this. You're going to factor, and this should be an easy factoring.
All right, any questions on, so you should got cos theta is negative one half, negative one, and then I strongly recommend you draw your unit circle out and then put, in this case, the x values in there and then figure out what angles get you to those x values. All right, so any questions before we move on? So we'll do one more problem. So this is secant squared theta minus 2 equals 0. So first of all, this is a quadratic. You could factor this as a difference of squares, but that will look kind of ugly. Well, let's go that way. Anyways, it'll be more fun. All right. So 2, you could write as square root 2 squared. And of course, secant squared, we can write it secant squared like that. So this is difference of squares. So it factors sec theta minus square root 2, sec theta plus square root 2 equals 0. So we factor this down. And zero product property again. Sec theta minus square root 2 equals 0, or sec theta plus square root 2 equals 0. Secant theta equals positive square root 2, or secant theta equals negative square root 2. Can I turn this problem into something with cosine or sine in it? So we'll write secant is 1 over cosine. So let's use that. I like to think in sines and cosines instead of secants and cosecants. So I'm going to turn this into 1 over cos theta is square root 2, and 1 over cos theta equals negative square root 2. And now I'm going to reciprocate both sides. You could also multiply by cos and divide by square root 2. You'll have the same, the same effect. So cos theta is 1 over square root 2 or negative 1 over square root 2. So cosine theta is always x values. So tell me what points on the unit circle have these x values right here. They're a little tricky. They're not 1 half or negative 1 half. So they're not going to be whatever we got before, 5 or 6 or 5 or 3. These are 1 over square root 2s. So it'll be our, yeah, our halfway point. So there's a half, but this is a little bit bigger. This is 1 over square root 2. So there's positive 1 over square root 2. There's negative 1 over square root 2. So there's going to be four solutions right here on the unit circle. So there's our positive 2, our negative 2 x values. And we'll go, let's we'll label these. So the first one we hit is pi over 4. The next one we hit is 3 pi over 4. And the next one is more pi's over 4 is 5 pi over 4. And we'll go all the way to the last one, 7 pi over 4. And if I labeled all these, this would be 1 over square root 2, 1 over square root 2. Of course, I'm really only caring about our x values, so it's the first of the two coordinates that I'm interested in. Uh, this one's negative 1 over square root 2, positive 1 over square root 2, and negative 1 over square root 2, negative 1 over square root 2, and then positive 1 over square root 2, 
negative 1 over square root 2. So write the uh, answer like theta equals form. Now I could write four answers down, all four that you see here, and then add 2 pi k to each of them. There's a, these are spaced out really nicely. So I'm just going to start with pi over 4. What can I add to pi over 4 so that if I keep adding that same amount, I'll get to every single answer written down? Plus half k. So close. So it needs to have a pi in it. So how, how much? So we want to go 90 degrees or pi over 2 each time. So these are spaced out perfectly, so I can do a quarter rotation to get all of them. So this is a special case. So we're going to go plus pi over 2k. So we got lucky here because they were spaced out perfectly. So generally, they won't be spaced out nicely like this. I think all the other examples we looked at weren't spaced out perfectly like this. So this is our sort of shortcut right here. And we use this pi over 2k because of perfect spacing. If I drew the unit circle without x, y axes, it would, it would look like that right there. So if I cut out the axes, you would, it's like a four-spoke bicycle tire. They're all spaced out evenly. So that's how I could rotate it, a quarter rotation. It looks exactly the same. Uh, all the other ones we did look something like this. So obviously, you can't rotate. You have to rotate that a full rotation to get back where you started. You can't just go a quarter rotation or a half rotation. It won't look the same. So some of them you can shortcut. When in doubt, just write down all four answers plus 2 pi k. That will always be correct. Well, as long as your four values are the correct ones. So I think this is a good place to stop before we get into the next section. So I'm going to lecture starting on inequalities. And we'll do some uh, inequalities tomorrow. And because I'm doing it tomorrow, I won't put it on your quiz if your quiz is Thursday. So and I'll open up another section for just inequalities. Since you have a few minutes left, can I ask a question about the homework? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Ah. So do you have the original starting? It was like, all right, so it was basically simplify this down. All right, so this one is tricky because of this stupid 2 right here. If that 2 wasn't there, this would be exactly like the ones I showed you in class. So because that 2 is there, it's a little more tricky. So we're going to play the same game that we did before. Cosine inverse is going to give us an angle. So everything I underlined, I'm going to let theta equal all that stuff. So it's the same first step. So cos theta equals x over 4. So we're going to draw our triangle here. Theta x is adjacent. Hypotenuse is 4. It's coincidence that it's x. It could have very well just been y, and I still would have had to written it. Uh, adjacent to my angle. So now this is tangent of that 2 is still there. This is tangent of 2 theta. Unfortunately, 2 theta, if I drew a 2 theta triangle, it would look 
uh, something like it would, the angle would double. It would be a completely different triangle, really unrelated to our original triangle. So drawing this triangle is really pretty useless here. Tangent two theta, though, if you look at your cheat sheet, there are some ways around tangent two theta. And what was the one that you ended up using? Yeah, do you remember the? So I think it was a plus minus square root. Is that right? That's for tangent A over 2. Tangent 2 theta is oh. 2 tan over 1 minus tan squared. Uh, so it's, what is it again? 2 tan theta minus over 1 minus tan squared. Tangent squared. All right, like that. All right, so all I need to do is figure out what's tangent theta, and then just put it in these two spots in this fraction. All right, tangent, I'm using Soka Toa, although I didn't say it. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. Uh-oh, what's our opposite side? Yep, so it'll be 16 minus x squared. You go Pythagorean theorem, the two sides squared equal the other, added up equal the other side, so you just solve it for the opposite side there. So we got opposite. 16 minus x squared over adjacent, which is x. Now I just have to very carefully put that into here. So we have 2 square root 16 minus x squared over 1 minus. Now I'm going to go ahead and square this right here. So we've got x squared on the bottom and 16 minus x squared right there. So does WebWork? WebWork should take something this ugly. This is a really good time to use, make sure what you typed in is what you wrote down. So look at, when you hit submit, look at the little preview because there's a really good chance that something is not where it should be. Like maybe, a, maybe this square root ended right here and then the x squared's outside the square root or something weird like that. So you wanna make sure your parentheses are okay. Uh, I could do common denominator Let me just look a little bit nicer. So I'm going to reciprocate the bottom and go common denominator at the same time. So we're going to get x squared, and we'll get, I think it's over 16. Is that right? x squared minus 16 minus x squared over x squared. So reciprocate and reduce, and you get negative 16. All right. So we got negative eight on the bottom, x square root 16 minus x squared. So I think that's as simple as you can make this one. All right, so that one was a little extra tricky, but remember anytime you see two theta or theta over two, you want to use that formula sheet with half or double angles. That's what your mind should immediately think of. Oh, I know some formulas for that. How can I relate that to stuff that I know about? 